Good morning and welcome to the Standing Committee's meeting for Wednesday, October 26, 2022. All council meetings will continue to be live streamed on the city's website. Our first order of business is roll call. Would the clerk please take the roll? Reverend Burgess. Here. Mr. Cothill. Here. Ms. Gross. Here. Mr. Kraus. Here. Mrs. Kel Smith. Ms. Strasberger. Here. Mr. Wilson. Here. Mr. Lavelle Chair. Here. Seven members present. Thank you. Our next order of business is public comment. I would like to remind all speakers that the rules of council state that comments are limited to matters of concern, official action, or deliberation, which are or may be before city council. Profanity is not permitted. Our first registered speaker is Dr. Ronald Lynn Miller. Uh, Dr. Ronald Lynn Miller of Bell Hoover and uh, Montevideo, Uruguay. Um, Global Intelligence Society, U.S. National Candidate for President 2024. GlobalIntelligenceSociety.org. Um, this PC uh, content is copyright RLM 2022. Um, citizens, I am asking you to embrace uh, the council concern regarding the vote, but there is a con, and I am asking you to consider eliminating that con. Um, a, a concern, ultra in fact, of this Pittsburgh City Council, but a conundrum is the vote. There is a, a deep uh, appreciation for, uh, rightly so, for the vote, uh, but there's a con in, involved, and I think it's extremely serious. Um, any U.S. citizen uh, can check a bank uh, money deposit, but no citizen can check a bona fide vote deposit. It just disappears. Um, I want every citizen to be in control of her or his vote. Um, many of you have asked me uh, what I mean by vote by voter verification. Um, vote by voter verification, copyright RLM, um, is, it, it means individual control in an institutional neighborhood uh, context um, and I think it will end the con. So first, uh, we need to establish um, an elected neighborhood um, institutional context for an individual to control his or her vote. Not people who just nominate themselves and write letters and send emails to people, but we need to elect neighborhood councils. Um, and I think there needs to be a referendum. I'll sponsor that in 2023. Um, for neighborhood councils, three members, and neighborhood uh, those supervisory boards, also three members, we recommend. Um, and uh, secondly, uh, we need to establish neighborhood uh, vote practices uh, that don't depend upon the wards, that are separate from the wards. Um, I know that is really complicated for a lot of people to, to try to deal with, but I think we need something parallel and something that is new. Um, so the primary vote is the paper ballot ink signature we recommend and uh, the vote in person should be thrown out i mean vote uh, by mail should be thrown out all vote in person and um, the um, people should be able to vote only on election day you know not early voting um, and that means eventually that there is encryption i'll continue this next week our next registered speaker is Naomi Mullen. I do not see with us. Our next registered speaker is Stephen Albert. Good morning. Uh, my name is Stephen Albert. I live at 6702 Beacon Street in Squirrel Hill, which is in District 5. I'm here to share the overwhelming voice of my neighbors who oppose Domi's current plans for the South Dallas Forbes Avenue Beechwood Boulevard Safe Connections Project. This project will make significant changes to our neighborhood streets and will make them less safe. Domi has held two poorly publicized meetings on the project, which is on a fast track to be completed in coordination with the reopening of the new Fern Hollow Bridge. Many the mayor's listening session in August offered optimistic comments and suggestions to address longstanding public safety problems with the complex series of intersections in the project area. 
At the October public meeting, Domi dismissed residents' priorities and instead presented that the best they could do was a quick build project to connect the bike lanes from the new bridge with Squirrel Hill's existing bike lanes. While this is an important task, my neighbors and I demand that improvements to safety of all of these intersections be made before adding more layers of traffic to the mix. Our petition requests two things. Domi's project sh team should meet with residents on site so that we can demonstrate the safety challenges that we face each day. They should also pause the current project to reevaluate it after the Fern Hollow Bridge reopens and after a new traffic study can be conducted. Over 400 of my neighbors have signed this petition in a week. They're speaking, but is the city listening? When signing the petition, Mitchell Dernis said, this plan only makes a poor design worse. It does nothing to improve safety for bicyclists or pedestrians crossing Beechwood Boulevard, and it does nothing to clear up the confusion for drivers unfamiliar with this intersection. John Tucker said, what they're doing is idiotic and will result in more accidents. And Lori Sobel said, this plan will cause more traffic problems. And they're right. These streets handle local commuter traffic in a vital corridor connecting Squirrel Hill to Point Breeze, Regent Square, and Oakland and beyond. According to the city's own traffic data from 2017 to 2021, there have been 40 crashes, including three that involve pedestrians and up to 24 injuries. This period includes the pandemic when traffic decreased dramatically, so it could have been a lot worse. We're willing and eager to collaborate with Domi and the city on sensible, comprehensive solutions. We don't want the success of the Fern Hollow Bridge to lead to tragedy on the other side. The success of the rebuilding of the bridge, I should say. Thank you to uh, Council President Kale Smith for your willingness to help on this issue, and I'd like to express my personal gratitude to our petition supporters. We hope that Council, the Mayor's Office, and Domi will hear our voice. Thank you. Thank you. I'll go back to Naomi Mullen. We must. Okay. So that exhausts our list of registered speakers. Um, anyone else wishing to speak, please come forward, provide your name and neighborhood for the record. You'll be given three minutes. My name is Yvonne F. Brown. I live at 715 Mercer Street in the Hill District. I want to explain something yesterday as why I was so weeping and crying. You know, I'm a strong woman and you don't usually see me cry, but when you're given Sapala, a proclamation, when as when my son died and he had came in here, he, and I, I brought it to his attention. I said, Mr. Sapala, when you got two proclamations that year and I had came to you and said about my son, five white cops in Wilkinsburg left him on the floor. He's saying, I, if I could breathe. Every time I hear them other men that the police killed, when he killed Floyd, this was what my son was saying, if only I could breathe. Okay, they take, and he comes down the steps, and he says, he got the best of me. And his utterance was, my, see, my son was blind in one eye. He came to the house where his woman lived. He was, had moved her in there, and there was another man that knocked my son out. He turned his head, he was saying, man, I live here. Knocked him out, head butted him, and head butted him. Okay, I... When I talk about it, I do get a little confused because it hurts me to know that my son knew he was going to die if they left him on the floor. They left him on the floor. The man came back and kicked my son to get death. <coughs> when they called the, the paramedics and the police came, they said he's dead. The paramedics had to work, promise, they had to insist to work on my son. There was five different stories from each policeman, five. And the only thing my son was saying at that time was no, no, no. Then you have them where they were saying, you want to go to the hospital, you want to go to the hospital. And they, I mean, and it's like 50 times that my son was saying no. He was saying no because that's when he came down the steps saying no. When he was 21, he got stabbed in his back. The man stabbed him, punctured his colon, punctured his intestine, and cut his liver in half. Now, when I go to the hospital, the doctor was telling me, he told my husband, this man was a better surgeon to me. But when he stabbed my son, my son said he stabbed me. It was in the restaurant. A whole lot of people was in. They said, oh, you a punk. And he did like that. He said, mommy, I showed him the blood. He said, but I could feel it. If I didn't get to the hospital, I was going to die. My son grabbed hold of his back and started running down Fifth Avenue. The paramedics had to catch up with him. 
They had to catch him. My son wanted to live. He wanted to live. Now, also, I, I, I got to talk about Mr. Burgess and your doctor that you brought here yesterday. I came back and I said to him, oh, you look like a, are you a minister? And he looked so familiar. He said, no, when she said Dr. Jeffries. At that time, I did not remember till I went out there and was talking to Sapala, and he came out and interrupted us. And I turned to him and I said, I got a phone to pick with you. And so then Sapala said, oh, she's something else. Okay, let me tell you what happened. He abandoned my husband. Thank, thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak? Please come forward. Okay. Weight limits, load, li load limits, steep hills, little swirly things, deer crossing, all signs we see in our Pennsylvania mountains if you take any trips. Issue, we have those same road conditions and beach view, south side slopes, going up through Belt to get to my daughter's in Westview. Um, beach view has been blessed with multiple merchants. We have these wonderful restaurants. We got the taco stand. We got um, Las Palmas. We got Dollar Eagle. Is that what it's called? The kids call it the Jamaican store. Um, but the delivery truck drivers. Google GPS doesn't tell them this is a residential, extremely steep, steep area, dangerous. Yesterday on my way in, a big rig, I'm talking big rig, jack breaking big rig came up coast where we needed to be one way only going down with a weight limit, put on his brakes and the force opened his back door and bricks came out all over on that steep hill. Thank God there was not another car behind him. How do I know about these steep hills? Between being an intake coordinator, paralegal, victim's advocate, this, that, and other. For 15 years, I drove a big bus to the state and federal prisons. I drove the loved ones. That was my cargo. I went up those steep mountainous areas, and I picked up little kids to take them to Graterford, to Camp Hill to every single state and federal prison I have been to during those 15 years. We need to get together, we need to have a meeting with people who have a CDL. We need to get together with the community that sees these big rigs and even straight trucks that are caught up, coming up, following GPS, and it's not safe. It is not safe at all. The only safe route, West Liberty, Pauline to Broadway. And I speak on that on experience. Please, before the next load breaks open and someone is killed. Thank you. Any further speakers? Seeing none, we'll move on to our standing committee agenda. Our first committee of the day is finance and law, which is chaired by myself. Our first new paper is Bill 847. Bill 847, resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in favor of Joy Marie Smith in the amount of $3,558.95 in settlement of a claim for damage to her vehicle from a city public works vehicle near 2250 Center Avenue on October 26, 2021. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Affirmative recommendation. Bill 848. Bill 848, resolution authorizing the mayor and the city solicitor to enter into a professional services agreement or agreements with Marshall, Dennehy, Warner, Coleman, and Goggin, PC, in an amount not to exceed $30,000 for expert legal services related to litigation in the United States District Court for the Western District of Pennsylvania. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Affirmative recommendation. Bill 849. Bill 849. Resolution authorizing the mayor and the city solicitor to enter into a professional services agreement or agreements with Spillman Thomas in Battle, PLCC, in an amount not to exceed $30,000 for the expert legal services related to litigation in, in the United States District Court for the Western District of Pennsylvania. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. 
Aye. Any opposed? Affirmative recommendation. Bill 850. Bill 850, resolution authorizing the mayor and the city solicitor to enter into a professional services agreement or agreements with Thomas Thomas and Hafer LLP in an amount not to exceed $30,000 for expert legal services related to litigation in the United States District Court for the Western District of Pennsylvania. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Firm to recommendation, Bill 851. Bill 851, resolution authorizing the mayor and the city solicitor to enter into a professional services agreement or agreements with Summers, McDonald, Hudock, Guthrie, and Rouch, PC, in an amount not to exceed $30,000 for expert legal services related to litigation in the United States District Court for the Western District of Pennsylvania. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Affirmative recommendation, Bill 852. Bill 852, resolution further amending resolution number 886 of 2021, effective December 27, 2021, entitled Resolution Adopting and Approving the 2022 Capital Budget and the 2022 Community Development Block Grant Program and the 2022 through 2027 Capital Improvement Program by reducing flood control projects by $196,833.44 and increasing slope failure remediation by $196,833.44. Motion to approve. Second. Session. Councilman Cockhill. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just wondered if I could get a breakdown as to where that 196 um, is coming from as far as the flood control. Uh, what projects, or was it earmarked for any certain projects? Is anybody here can you answer that for me? It would be Director Lucas. Come on up here, Patrick. How you doing? Good. You could just give us your name and title for the record. Sure, uh, Patrick Cornell, Deputy Director, Office of Management and Budget. Um, so these. This funding shift is for uh, some emergency landslide invoices that Domi has already received and had to react to. Um, the breakdown would be Hamburg, Woodruff, Arlington, Eaton, Eaton sorry. Is that, is, Patrick, let yes. me stop you. Is that breakdown for projects that are uh, flood control or is that breakdown there's, that you were this just is, naming? We have shifted it from the flood okay. control line right. to handle emergency slope work. Gotcha. So the, where you shifted it from the flood control, what was there, was it earmarked for certain flood control projects? Uh, and if so, is there any in D4? I would need to, to get that information. Okay. Okay. Because I, unfortunately, I have both, plenty of both, you know. So I just want to make sure, you know, it's year by year. Um, some years we got extensive flooding. Some years, you know, we luck out. But uh, it's been an ongoing problem in the district four neighborhoods and uh, I just wanted to make sure none of that money was being transferred out of flood control projects for D4. So if you could look into that for me, okay, before Tuesday, it'd be great. Thank you. Councilman Wilson. Thank you, Chair. Um, hi, Patrick. How's it going? <clears throat> Thanks for slowing down <laughs> yeah, the process here. So the, uh, the original you know what's being reduced here the flood control well i mean well, what's the idea of those projects because i heard like eiton street um so one i'll pivot back i actually just got a chat from domi um this is from the urgent flood control line so it is not for a specific deliverable um and then i would i'm not sure if director lucas may be on the line uh to to talk about the specifics of each individual project that we had to move these forward with um because if not, I will get that information for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So, like, we're not doing the flood control projects anymore? <laughs> uh, I mean, that line in particular was for the urgent reaction. Um, you know, at this point with that 22 capital line, uh, the slope failures were a little more pressing. Um, but if there is a flood control issue that comes up, we will obviously react as we need to. Okay, and then what, um, 
is there an I is it uh, categorized yet what slope I mean that's not that much money for a slope failure remediation correct these so are why, um, why is there just a little bit of money so these, these are projects that have actual outstanding invoices to be paid yeah. um, you know the work has already started for this group and uh, that's all in the fiscal impact statement Oops. all right thanks <laughs> You're right down there, Rev. Yeah. <laughs> Almost, have, could have been worse. Have some more flood remediation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Two, two seats down. Urgent. We got yeah. urgent need for it right here. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, terrible. Good. Did you get it? I think we got it. In the. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm. Good. I mean, I'm curious what the. The flood control projects are, but it's not that much money. So. All right, thanks. <clears throat> Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Firm to recommendation. Bill 853. Bill 853, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the <coughs> Office of Management and Budget to enter into an agreement or agreements with agencies to provide emergency shelter services street outreach services, rental assistance and housing relocation and stabilization services, and or data collection activities as associated with 2022 emergency solutions grant funds at a cost not to exceed $1,198,946. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Firm to recommendation. Bill 854. Bill 854. Resolution providing for an agreement or agreements with the Jewish Healthcare Foundation to provide administration and operating expenses, housing and housing related supportive services to persons with HIV and AIDS and their families at a total cost not to exceed $1,275,737. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Affirmative recommendation. Need a motion to approve the invoices. Second. Any, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Invoices are approved. Need a motion to approve the P cards. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? P cards are approved. That takes us to Public Works Committee, chaired by Councilman Coghill. One, first new paper is Bill 839. Bill 839, resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Pittsburgh and the director of the Department of Public Works to apply for a grant from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County's Gaming Economic Tourism Fund for the Arsenal Renovation Phase 1 project in the amount of $428,070 for this stated purpose. Motion to approve, <coughs> Mr. Second. Chair. Second it. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Firm to recommendation. Bill 840. Bill 840. Resolution providing for an agreement or agreements with Power Construction Company for the construction phase of the CBD Signals Phase 4 project and providing for the payment of the cost thereof not to exceed $3,822,201.20. Need a motion? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Oh aye. 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 Any opposed? Affirmative recommendation. That moves us to land use and economic development, which is chaired by Councilman Wilson. One deferred paper, Bill 661. Bill 661. Resolution accepting a new street name, Wood Ring Court, in the 23rd Ward of the City of Pittsburgh, as per recommendation by the City of Pittsburgh Addressing Committee. The following street name was approved by CPAC in June of 2022. The name listed in this ordinance shall be made official in accordance with the Pittsburgh Code, Title IV, Public Places and Property, Chapter 420, Uniform Street Naming and Addressing. Motion to hold one month. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill will be held one month. Uh, it takes us to our new papers, Bill 855. Bill 855. Resolution further amending resolution number 886 of 2021, effective December 27, 2021, 
as amended, entitled Resolution Adopting and Approving the 2022 Capital Budget and the 2022 Community Development Block Grant Program and the 2022 through 2027 Capital Improvement Program so as to identify specific public service grant projects in City Council District 2, District 3, District 4, and District 8 and authorize a subsequent agreement or agreements for operation, administrative expenses, maintenance, purchase of equipment, and or rehabilitation of neighborhood facilities on behalf of the residents of the City of Pittsburgh. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Affirmative recommendation. Bill 856. Bill 856. Resolution providing for the designation as a historic structure <clears throat> as a historic structure under Title 11 of the Code of Ordinances, the certain property known as 412 Boulevard of the Allies, located at 412 Boulevard of the Allies in downtown in a first ward city of Pittsburgh, the city is the owner of the property. Motion to uh, hold for Cablecast public hearing. Second. Second. I do have a question about that. Discussion, Councilman Burgess? I have a quick recall. Is the city, is the city in a agreement with this or not or with the owner that we say yes no what, I don't know the, I'm just curious who not how it got nominated that's I guess my concern does anybody know how it got nominated uh, you know typically in the past we had the nominator I asked for the nominator to be on the on the title but I don't see it is there anybody around that can tell us anything about this bill I'm looking I don't see uh, Sarah Quinn with us I will right, we'll figure it out. <clears throat> yeah, as for Karen Abrams or Andrew Dash. I mean, I, I, I'll find out afterwards. It's just, it's just, um, it's in an odd place, and I think it's an odd structure. From what I understand, it's an odd, it's an odd situation. Uh, I think the buildings subdivide the condos and so I just I, I, I'm just curious about it how high it here to, to address it? no somebody no, here, not. So, here. Okay. but we'll figure it out I'll, I'll do it after the you, fact the director yeah I know but the director said he would do you know anything about this do you, oh cool didn't know <laughs> the facilities guy yeah, yeah come on come on over Director, turn your mic on. And then reintroduce yourself, please. Sorry. Chris Hornstein, Director of Public Works. Um, I did not do the nomination. Um, I became aware of it, I think, last week. Um, you know, from our perspective, um, you know, working with the other condo owners, the URA and the Housing Authority, um, you know, this does not in any way impact the development of the 412 building. Um, you know, everything that we're doing there is kind of already in accordance with what we understand of the historic character of the building. Um, so this, this wouldn't have any impact on us. So it's our building? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really yeah, it's right. a new building. And who nominated? Um, I, I believe that nomination would come from city planning would have to provide you that information. We got an email about it. Let me look up. I don't remember. I'm just... There's got to be something wrong. It's just... Odd. That's all. It's just odd. I think. Well, I, I'll leave it alone. The, 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 this this process is broken. This nomination process is absolutely broken. This is just an, another example of how broken this is, and we need to fix this. Right? When we have random people walking down the street nominating buildings for random reasons, we need to fix this. And I. I keep saying I'm going to, you know, I, I'll work with Mr. Coggio. Let's figure this out because this is just, me. well. I've he, only been here before him. But no, okay. but him and I talked about, <laughs> about this before, about doing something together. And him and I will talk about it. it. It needs to be fixed. This is nuts now. And so we'll, we'll try to figure it out. Thanks. Thank you, Coggio. Yes, uh, I agree with you 100%, Reverend. Um, I think we should entertain having a post agenda and having, you know, historic yeah. review commission here and see how they go about their process, who, 
who is able, I mean, I guess anybody is able to nominate any structure, mm -hmm. which is kind of absurd to me. But, but anyway, yeah, um, Director Hornstein, I, I didn't know if you had answers to these questions. I really wanted to check on the progress of the building. Um, is that in your purview or? Okay. So I know we have one agency in there already, at least, right? Is it the URAs in there? Correct, the URA is in there now. Okay, so that's completely built out, finished. So the other two agencies is the Housing Authority Correct. and PLI. And city planning um, and a few other scattered functions throughout the city. Gotcha. Um, current, pro you know, current progress on that project is we just received bids back for the construction of city-owned space um, as well as common space in the building. Um, so we're going through that contracting process now. Um, you know, we expect that to be completed, I believe, um, very soon, um, you know, mid to end of November, um, at which point in time we're going to go we're right into construction. The um, housing authority um, and their suites are currently under construction. Um, so our anticipated occupancy date is right now, we're projecting it as sometime next summer. And planning is scattered out. I know we have a little bit in Beachview. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not it's not it's not it's not right. great yeah so everybody right. everybody right now is scattered we're well aware of the conditions at 200 ross um so really this is um full steam ahead to get this done and we can get folks open and we can you know start having a, a one-stop shop gotcha and that's entirely occupied by the ura the housing authority and pli it's going and and city planning and, and city some planning. Other, it's essentially city um ura and the housing authority Okay, good. URA is finished, build out. The other two agencies we're going to start building out Reasonable once we get back. through the process of the permits. And um, you know, the this permit, time next the, year it should be built out as well. Yeah, next year, midsummer sometime, we should be occupied and in there and operational. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair. Councilwoman Gross. Thank you. Uh, Director Hornstein, thank you for being here. I'm curious. <laughs> Since we are talking about the progress of the building, um, how is it working with the contract that we gave for building management? Um, in my recollection, that was at least $150,000 a year. I believe it would be a $400,000, maybe it was less than $150,000. It feels like it was like a $400,000 contract or a $300,000 contract over four years. I just can't remember. Can you um, help me with that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have a, there is a building manager there. Um, they are, you know, on site, um, providing security, um, cleaning the other services that we um, contract them for, um, the basic building management services. Um, and how much was that contract? I, you know, honestly, uh, Councilwoman, I don't have those details um, at my fingertips, but I certainly I can follow up with you and provide that. Well, I think council voted on it, so I guess I can look it up and register it here. Um, but I, I do think it was in the ballpark of uh, it was a $300,000 contract or something like that that council voted on. Um, and so, and how long has that been going on? How long have we had the building under our control? The building has been under our control um, for a property manager. I would, again, I have to check my records, but I believe that we um, executed that contract with the other agencies in December, January timeframe of 2020, 2021. Well, we've, we've had the building longer. We have had the building longer than that, yes, but we did not have a property manager under contract to manage. Yeah, so when did we buy the building? summer of 2018 i believe okay so it's been a full four years correct that we've owned the building yes you'll have to speak i can't I, when i'm when i'm speaking i can't see council chambers at all on my screen i apologize like the, the picture just goes blank so i can't there you go we just pop back up thank you i because I can't see if you're nodding or something, so you'll have to speak into the microphone. Absolutely. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you. 
So that's four years, and um, we have been paying a building manager for more than two years, almost three years. Um, and, um, and so these are significant costs, and we only have one agency in the building. So we're using a quarter of the building? Roughly thereof, a quarter to a third. I'd have to verify that detail, but roughly. Right, and it was a, I, I'm just gonna remind the record and the public that it was a $40 million bond um, that council approved, and, and myself, I voted no, and I think Council O'Connor voted no on the borrowing, um, because it looked like we were overpaying for downtown real estate. Um, and a lot of I sympathize with the employees. We certainly want to make sure that we have safe and secure working conditions for our employees. Um, and there was a significant difference in um, opinion of uh, whether purchasing a brand new building, Class A downtown building, um, was really the right move uh, for doing that. I'm actually just reading a title of a bill from September of um, 2020. It's one of the nice things about working on the screen. And it looks like it was Bill 2020-0748, um, amending Resolution 342 of 2019, that authorized um, B and Public Works to do a professional services agreement with Oxford Development Company to serve as property manager for 412 Boulevard of the Allies um, to add money to, uh, to provide additional funds for management fees at a cost not to exceed $430,976 and to authorize appropriation of building operations at an amount not to exceed $1,318,000 for end capital repairs. And it, on top of that, other those other dollars, capital repairs at about two hundred and thirty-eight thousand. Um, are you you know? Can you give me any details about those expenditures? Uh, certainly. Um, the capital repairs were um, for some water infiltration um, that were in the basement, as well as um, water infiltration in the elevator shaft of the building. Um, so those repairs were to address those situations. Um, normal, what we would consider, you know, in line with um, normal property ownership. Um, the other expenditures would have been related or related to the contract for the uh, property management company um, to provide their um, on-site services. Right, okay. So we were significantly behind schedule a lot of projects are significantly behind schedule given that we entered a pandemic um, and we know what that's like with both labor and just you know executing contracts and supply chains and those kinds of things that part's understandable um, having a building that has water issues um, that we pay kind of top dollar for is a little more concerning um, to me and also, um, I, 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 don't want, I don't need you to answer today, but I do think that we should be having a conversation soon about um, how much outlay each of the condo participants um, has made so far into the building, right? So that you know, we're looking right now at the costs that we put in, um, but there are also, there's a tri-party agreement um, so our city of Pittsburgh Urban Redevelopment Authority is putting in money from its own accounts. And our city of Pittsburgh Housing Authority is putting in money from its accounts. And so we're not looking at all of that here. So I know that you're not here to speak to that today. Um, and I will certainly be supportive of the nomination here um, and be looking forward to hearing that testimony. Um, but. Um, I do have outstanding questions, and so um, I do think this council should be looking for answers to some of those. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Any Councilman Cockhill? Yes. Um, Director, what's the status of Ross Street? Um, are we selling it? Is it? 
I'm going to have to follow up on that detail with you. I mean, that was always the intended um, plan was for disposition. I'm just not sure where they are in that, in that process. Nobody's occupying it at current time. Uh, there's a uh, skeleton staff of people that are currently are still in there while we, in there? while we um, activate um, some other spaces for them for the winter season. Yeah, yes. but the plan is to sell it. Correct. Okay, thanks. All those in favor of Mr. holding Chair, second round. on the motion to hold for a public hearing? Uh, Mr. Chair, second round. Second round on the motion to hold for a public hearing. Councilwoman Gross. Yes, thank you. I, I just, this council is the only body that can decide to sell anything. Um, and there was never, in my recollection, a discussion at this table about selling to Linda Cross Street. Um, so there is no plan to sell to Linda Cross Street. Um, and so I just wanted the, to correct the record there. Um, and I certainly am not in favor of the city um, just selling out its assets just because there are buyers for them. Um, we hold our properties for public use and um, I would, I think the public deserves a fulsome discussion about what uses might be for a building downtown, excuse me, downtown, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm saying not today because I have a little bit of a, a cough. Um, so, uh, I look forward to that discussion when we can have all of the same facts on the table and we can be transparent um, about the discussion of 200 Cross Street and we can be accountable to the people for that discussion. So, thank you. That's all I needed to say. Thank you. All those in favor of holding for a Cablecast public hearing, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill will be held. Thank you. That moves us to the Urban Recreation Committee, chaired by Councilman Burgess. One new paper, Bill 860. Bill 860, resolution instructing the Director of Parks and Recreation in the Department of Public Works to amend the rules and regulations for sports field permits to provide priority use to athletic organizations comprised of City of Pittsburgh residents. Motion. Motion to approve with discussion. Second. Second. Thank you. Um, Director, I know that you, you know that this has been an issue for me for a very long time, that we keep going back and forth over permits for the athletic associations across the city of Pittsburgh. They do a tremendous job. Your crews do a tremendous job. We appreciate all the work that is being done by DPW. There's one area where I struggle, and it is the permit area. Um, we have, you know, the big. there's a huge issue with the dynamos, squirrel little dynamos right now. And I want to thank Mayor Ganey's office. Uh, they are scheduling a meeting. I think we have it confirmed um, to address their permitting issue. But the bottom line is a lot of these associations during COVID, one of the reasons we wanted grants for the athletic associations is during COVID, they helped keep 10,000 kids off the streets of the city of Pittsburgh when recreation centers were closed, when schools were closed, when kids didn't want to be locked up in a house all day. The athletic associations with absolutely no way to raise money because there was also no way to bring people together to do their night at the races and the things that they do to raise money. They were struggling and trying to get kids uniforms and trophies and make it as if things didn't change so dramatically for kids. So I appreciate what they do, and I know what they do. I ran at Westwood Oakwood Athletic Association with my husband and other people for about 20, 25 years. And they do a tremendous <clears throat> amount of work. Some of your crews run the associations. But then it came up an issue with um, the Squirrel Hill Little Dynamos, which I believe has about 900 members, families. And there was an, a, an association, I believe it might be there in your district, a flag football league that needed to use the field. And instead of trying us all trying to figure out, okay, how can we do this? I know that you've had some meetings. I know you've had some conversations with them. But the bottom line is we shouldn't be coming in taking fields off of somebody who's been using it for years. And the Squirrel Hill Little Dynamos actually put money to build those, the, that field, which is really unusual uh, across the city because they are, you know, a lot of the associations struggle. But the thing, the question we really should be asking ourselves is how can we get a great field for in every part, in every sector of the city, so kids aren't being pulled off a field to accommodate another kid or to accommodate an adult that wants to use a field. And I think we also, and I've said this a gazillion times, we want to build a 
um, and you can chime in. I know you. I know you have some opinions about this too. I don't want. I don't want you to feel like you have to just listen to me pontificate about this. But, <laughs> but I want to say that. Um, you know, I have said numerous times we need an adult facility as well, a place where adults can go and if they want to play baseball, throw darts, axe throwing, whatever they do in a facility. Other cities, major cities, and cities similar to ours have significant uh, places for young adults to, to have recre to recreate as well. It's not pitting kids against adults. I mean, and then we have young adults that are also at risk and high risk, so we need field time for them too. And I know that there's a lot going on with all this, but I just want to say part of this is is that if we don't figure this out and try to stop all the things we're doing to, to prevent the athletic associations, which serve around 10,000 kids in the city of Pittsburgh, if we don't stop taking them off fields to try to accommodate somebody else instead of trying to figure out how we can be supportive, how the city can be a team, a part of a team with them, then we're going to put something forward where the permits are changed dramatically because we're not gonna keep seeing, watching this year after year. And this started long before you. I remember Tom Murphy, I told people this, I said, I remember when Tom Murphy was mayor and he was gonna do something to the athletic associations. I think at the time it was big league or something he wanted to do, you know, stop. They packed this chambers and out in the hallway and down in the portico, they were all over the place. And they, I'm telling you, they're a well-oiled, well-organized machine because they all work together. They play against one another. They, can, they, they know how, there's, I don't think there's a better way to organize across the city than with the athletic associations. If they need to get people out, they're gonna get people out. And so we've already received, I think, over 300 emails about this permit um, situation with the dynamos. And I don't, we don't wanna see anybody not have a great field. We wanna see everybody have great fields. So I wanna be clear about that. But it's how do we get to a place where we're not pitting one against the other. And so, with, and I know you're in a, it's a challenge for you and a challenge for your department. But I also think that it's not. I also feel like the the athletic associations have not been a significant priority or significant enough through every throughout the years since I've been involved in them. Um, but I do know you had at least you know a meeting with them. But I think we should have meetings every year. I, I can talk a lot about it because I did run an association. I know a lot about it. Councilman Calkill runs an association. He knows a lot about it. Um, but it's we're going to defend our athletic associations. That's, that's all I'm going to say. But I'll turn it over to other members. I know they have a lot to say. Thank you. Councilman Cogill. Councilman Gross, you have your hand up too? Okay, I saw you. You had your seat. Thank you, Councilman Valerie. Are you calling on me? Yeah, let's, let's start with Councilman Gross because she's online. I don't want to I miss her. Thank you. I appreciate that, Mr. Chair. Um, so I just wanted to support and upload what President Smith just said. I. Um, I believe we should be doing more as well. We've said this in other kinds of discussions about supporting athletic leagues. Um, we have too much demand, more demand than we can satisfy at our facilities. And getting our recreational facilities for our citizens, we know has so many positive repercussions. And we, we struggle with issues about how to create healthy families, healthy people, healthy kids, healthy communities at this table. And this is one part of the answer. Um, so we, sh we should be doing more. And uh, I concur with Councilwoman Smith, especially the rectangular fields. Um, we've known this has been coming for a very long time. I can't tell you how many conversations I had with the previous director at DPW about locating another rectangular field, at least one. Um, and he was trying desperately to put one in um, District 7 to satisfy uh, these competing demands, demands for, for kids' sports, athletic teams, and for adult sports. Um, there's an unused um, URA site, um, Councilman Lavelle at 62nd Street, which is twice as big as we would need to create an athletic um, rectangular field. I think you only need about four acres. Maybe Director Hornstein knows better than I do. Um, and it's an eight acre site. Um, and uh, so that could be located, you know, easily accessible to other parts of the city because of highways and things like that right on the riverfront. Um, it's hard for the city of Pittsburgh, let's just acknowledge it's hard for the city of Pittsburgh to find a three or four acre level site, which is, I think we've done a little research, what you need for a rectangular field, especially. Um, so I'm supportive of upgrading um, our athletic fields as well as the baseball diamonds and things like that. 
Um, and so I just, uh, I, I'm happy to support um, the effort any way possible, uh, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Councilman Coghill? Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, First of all, um, Madam President, I want to commend you for all your actions you're taking on in the you know, Little League associations, whether it be the funding that we're receiving that we can give directly to them. You know, your work here is, I love it. So, you know, it's important to you. I know you're passionate about it, as I am too. And as somebody who's played on these fields this year, actually, I will say this, Director, um, they do a very good job at taking care of the fields. And I love the direct communication they have with the coaches and the permit holders. And, um, you know, in my district anyway, I can't speak for every district, but, uh, you know, I'm really pleased with the way they manicured the field. I felt like it was a reflection on me when my team was playing there and, there, you know, if the grass was too high or, you know. Um, so, so, no, it was no problems. Um, I, I thought the fields were great. My question is this, uh, you know, from the permits, do we profit from that? Or what, and, and the permits that are purchased, does that money go back in towards the athletic associations or the maintenance of the fields? Or um, can you speak to that? Yeah, I mean, we, we do not charge for um, youth permit. Um, so those, those youth athletic fields are free. Um, I believe on the permit schedule it says 50 cents, but we haven't enforced that. Oh. Um, the adult, um, we do ask the adult um, permit holders to charge a modest fee. I believe that goes back to the general fund. Got it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to shut up over here. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, that, that's all. So we, there is no financial... Is that nothing? Uh, you know, gain for us from permitting the fields. Is that correct? That, that's uh, correct. Youth leagues are free, which is great. That makes sense. Yeah, but to adult cool. leagues and people yeah. from outside the city mm -hmm. who want to use our facilities and purchase a permit, which is part of what my league did, um, you know, I, I can't remember what the price was. It was kind of modest. So, so there's no windfall of finances coming from permitting these fields. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Wilson. <clears throat> thank you. And thank you, Madam President, for putting this legislation forward. I know we were talking about um, this issue for a little bit and figuring out what to do. So thanks for stepping up and putting this down. I, uh, you know, have similar issues with um, the Riverview Park soccer field, um, specifically the permitting of that field and, and that led to understanding more of the um, scoring system that's in place internally about how it's being scored um, so or how the field is organized with the permitting so that it it's an equitable process and I looked at the kind of like the algorithm and it's interesting because I mean hopefully um, hopefully I'm not wrong in remembering this but it almost it looked as though like a private school would be prioritized before a neighborhood group or like a neighbor, like a community uh, league. And specifically, the old Allegheny Soccer League is is you know really the the sticking point for me right now because um, you know that if that group didn't exist, then this field would have never been created in the first place. And uh, you know, is there? I'm curious to know if like if we're going to talk about it, you know, whether or not uh, the field is being used or the permitting process is equitable. I mean, if that organization is equitable as well, I mean, that should say something too. Like if they're, you know, serving the whole neighborhood, um, the greater north side, you know, I think that counts for a lot more points. And just the, just the mere fact that they're, you know, the organization of, you know, why this uh, sport became more popular on the north side. So I'm definitely interested to, revisit that algorithm because I've, I've heard of a few different cases where um, you know a private school is coming over from a different part of the city and using that field it's a great field and um, you know they're just wondering how they can get more field time and not have to feel like they're being kicked off the field for a private school so I'll leave it at that but I'm really interested to see how we can rework the algorithm so that we can you know prioritize groups you know if they are serving the greater part of the community and you know they're a, 
you know, they're meeting all the goals that we expect, you know, to serve all the people of Pittsburgh, then yeah, I think we should prioritize them as well. Um, and, you know, the, the, the office has been great. Allison Body has been great. Um, constant, great communication with the organizations. Um, but, you know, the conversation just comes back to, well, this is an internal policy and, and that's what we're following. So I'm glad we're going to, you know, this resolution kind of gets to that for you to investigate that and, and uh, report back. So, so with that said, <clears throat> excuse me, um, look forward to hear what you come up with. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first, I want to thank, again, Council President for initiating this conversation and bringing it to the point where we can talk about it at a standing committee meeting. Um, there have been many, many conversations in the background, as many of us know, but to bring it to the public's attention as well that we are having these conversations. I think, you know, I haven't done a full count. It's probably beyond 200 emails we've gotten from Dy Dynamo Soccer among us at a DPW and Council District um, uh, two and eight um, filling in for, for District 5 at the moment. Um, and on that point, I really want to thank Council President for doing, taking on basically three roles right now, that of representing her district, representing Council as, as President, and also District 5 as we're waiting for a new Council member to be elected. It's, it's been a lot of work for you, I recognize that, and many late nights and many weekends. So thank you for that, not only on this, but on the issue we heard earlier today on the intersection. Um, I, we, we've, been, we've been talking a lot, and, um, and you've been doing a lot of listening, Director Hornstein. I wanted to give you first an opportunity to respond or address anything you've heard um, so far today, um, if you had anything to respond to and felt you needed to, and second, to hear what you think of this proposed legislation. Um, well, thank you for that. Um, I think, well, there's a, a lot of really great discussion at the table, so I want to thank all of you for, for raising this up, because I think... Um, from my perspective as a manager of the system, um, you know, first and foremost, um, I, I thank you all for the kind words for our crews, um, both out in the field and in the office that support these amazing organizations every single day. Um, I can't say enough about the incredible work that they do um, with what, in I, my opinion, um, you know, sometimes subpar tools and equipment, but they make it go, and I think that they deserve all the credit for that. Um, you know, the, I think the basic fact of the matter is, is that we have um, more people that want to use our athletic facilities than we have athletic facilities to use. And, and so, unfortunately, that creates conflicts that we have to have a process to try to resolve. Um, and that's the means of the policy. Now, we updated our policy um, last year for the first time in many years. Um, so that we could create more access for organizations that we were turning away um, because we feel that you know every single hour of a permitted facility is is precious um, because we only have so many and so um, with that change is gonna come um, you know mistakes and learning curve um, and we're listening and we're gonna respond to those in, in a, a new update to the policy um, for next year that will govern those actions next year based on the dynamo conversations um, so we can make that more equitable um, for those folks um, and you know we're always welcoming input on that we share that you know we did our first meeting with the organizations last January I thought it was a great success we're going to continue that practice um, for them we're trying to craft the policy so that it works for everyone we're not perfect but we're trying to get there um, you know that's as much to help those organizations as it is to help us manage it um, because I mean I know you've all mentioned Allison body um, and she is does an unbelievable her team does an unbelievable fantastic job working with all of these organizations and it's it's difficult sometimes to make a choice between you know two youth organizations who want to use um, one facility and um, you know where we have nothing else available in the system that's kind of suitable for their needs so there's a lot in there right there's a lot in there to unpack in terms of um, project work there's a lot in there to unpack in terms of policy where i i applaud the council president for bringing the legislation forward i think it's a great thing I, i'm very excited to work with all of you on that i'm all, i'm all in on making this better for everyone Thank you, Director. I appreciate that, and knowing your position on this and your perspective. Um, a couple of things that haven't been said. One is I, I, um, 
I haven't been at the table, but from the sounds of it and talking to people that we haven't fully um, brought the power of the city of Pittsburgh to the idea of collaborating with PPS and utilization of their fields and athletic facilities mm -hmm. that might go unused, private schools, universities that have space. Um, you know, it's one thing if one person is having a conversation with another entity. It's, it's a different thing if five members of council are all in it together with the mayor and the director of DPW. So I just wanted to put that on the table. Second, I think I really am certain that if we put our heads together, we can come up with creative out-of-the-box solutions that aren't maybe permanent solutions to the over the overutilization under capacity issue of uh, you know our athletic facilities that are going to take 10 20 years to resolve but could be short term fixes in the meantime that we reevaluate each year every couple of years um, i also wanted to mention that um, i will be really scrutinizing things like um, the use of our rad dollars um, use of our parks tax money when it comes to um, you know, boots on the ground work to improve our athletic facilities and our, you know, in our parks, um, because this is such a um, an urgent and um, uh, uh, present issue for all of us right now in all of our council districts. So, n not a conversation piece for for right now, but in a, in a month or so when we're really discussing the budget um, publicly, I want to preview that for uh, for you and for that that's in my in my head right now. Thank you. Second round, Councilman Wilson. Yeah, I just wanted to say in terms of the, the price of the permitting um, and knowing that PPS has top priority in terms of that algorithm, that internal um, policy, that's a pretty good collaboration between the city and the, and the school district that, you know, I mean, first priority, uh, free access, so yeah, it'd be good to understand some more of how much we're collaborating with them on their on on our fields, and I was just curious if like that is um, usually obviously that happens like after school, um, and and even with Allegheny they're like we're you know that's too early for us, um, but uh, I've also heard from coaches uh, from PPS on just the need for you know that they wish that there was more. Um, fields on their side, you know, with, I guess, I guess the school district would own it. Are you aware of any, uh, groundbreakings coming up or any fields that, that the school district is, is going about to, to invest in? Like, are they going about to invest in any fields? Yeah. I, mean, I, I know you're not the, yeah, I haven't checked with them on their capital plan to yeah. see how they're, how they're investing. I, I mean, I can speak to the, you know, the great relationship we have with PPS oh, where we, um, you know, we do that constantly with them to try to figure out accommodating times um, for both our permit requesters as well as theirs. Um, you know, we co-locate in a lot of different locations um, mm -hmm. that are adjacent to PPS schools and both off-site. So we work with them pretty closely throughout the year to help, you know, facilitate access to, to fields for everyone. Okay. Yeah, and they're a great partner with the, the Northside Steelers on, on uh, you know, getting the permit and use of the Oliver High School. So... All right. Well, thanks. Thank you. President Smith? Yeah, I just, uh, to wrap it up, I just want to say I think that we'll schedule a meeting with you to start working on some of these concerns and how we can address it. And we'll have the administration there because I know they have a lot to say in it as well. And I want to thank Melvin um, Haberdell, Brother Melvin. He's um, actually scheduled a meeting with Pittsburgh Public Schools. And it's my understanding. I want to make sure I quote him correctly. but to work on additional fields that might help solve the issue with the dynamos. So he, he's going to work with Councilman Lavelle and, and others um, that might be affected in that area. But, um, and I do wanna say that the mayor's office has scheduled a meeting with the dynamos, so we will have some kind of conversation about it. But this is not just isolated to dynamos. As you can hear across the, across the table, there's concerns across the city of Pittsburgh. We've had them previously with Elliott Athletic Association. And I just wanna say, there's a cost associated. We give permits for free, but there's a cost associated with not doing these programs. And you know, the city of Pittsburgh could not possibly do what, all, what these athletic associations do across the city, not just the mentoring that they do with the children and the maintenance, they help maintain the fields, but the things they do in the community. Um, across the board they do a lot of different things and um, 
and they make, they're the things that make Pittsburgh a livable city, that make people want to live here and make it great. But we also want young adults to come. So I want to get to a place where we're more comfortable with what we're doing with athletic associations across the city of Pittsburgh, including for young adults. Um, and working with Pittsburgh Public Schools. But I do want to say, we're going to working with Pittsburgh Public Schools. We just gave back a lot of our playgrounds to Pittsburgh Public Schools to maintain, and not all of them are being maintained. And so I, we may want to revisit that that whole you know, idea of a lot, making sure they're maintaining the, the playgrounds when they're on the same fields that we use every day and our kids are going down uh, on a dilapidated playground. So I think it's some conversations that we have to have in general. Thank you. Sorry. Make a motion. And yeah, can I just say also, I want to thank everyone, all the members for working with us. And Councilman Wilson did say that he would like to be added as a sponsor yeah, once that's we, what I was going to ask, yeah. yeah, because he did bring up that he had some concerns in his district. He was getting ready to introduce legislation too. And Councilman Gross and I already had a meeting with Pittsburgh Public Schools where um, we, at that meeting, we brought up the need to collaborate a little bit more. So I know that everyone's trying their best, but motion to hold um, two weeks and we'll work on this. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill be held two weeks. <clears throat> bill Thank that you, takes director. us to Intergovernmental Affairs Committee, chaired by Councilwoman Gross, Bill 841. Bill 841, I resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's official sewage facilities plan for 717 and 719 Eureka Street. Motion to approve. Need a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Affirmative recommendation. Bill 842. Bill 842. Resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of finance to enter into a permanent easement with the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority for the installation, maintenance, repair, operation, and removal of a sewer line on city-owned property. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Firm to recommendation. Bill 843. Bill 843. Resolution authorizing the Urban Redevelopment Authority of Pittsburgh to acquire all the city's yeah. right, title, and interest, if any, in into the following publicly owned properties in the 15th Ward of the City of Pittsburgh, designated in the Deed Registry Office of Allegheny County as Block 56F, Lot 176, located at 201 Glen College Street, Council District Number Five. Motion to approve brief discussion. Uh, second, uh, I'd like to. I was like to say I would like to defer to the Member President on District Five issues. Thank you, Councilwoman, for um, for deferring. I asked Councilwoman to defer. I'd like to make a motion to hold for one week till I find out a little bit more. This is in a district that I'm representing, Council District Five, until they have a, a newly elected. Council person, which cannot happen fast enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> is, is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill will be held one week. Uh, Bill 844. Bill 844. Resolution authorizing the URA of Pittsburgh to acquire all the city's right title and interest, if any, in into the following publicly owned properties in the 13th Ward of the City of Pittsburgh, designated in the Deed Registry Office of Allegheny <laughs> County. It's Block 174 in Lots 80 and 81, located on the east side of North Homewood Avenue between Hamilton Avenue and Formosa Way, and formerly known as 608 and 610 North Homewood Avenue, Council District 9. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Affirmative recommendation, Bill 845. Bill 845. Resolution authorizing the URA of Pittsburgh to acquire all the city's right title and interest, if any, in into the following publicly owned properties in the 25th and 26th wards of the city of Pittsburgh, designated in the deed registry office of Allegheny County as Block 46J, Lots 209, 210, 212, 219, 220, 337, and 341 and Block 46N, Lots 230, 231, 232, 234, and 235, located along the west side of Wilson Avenue between Burgess Street and Drum Avenue, and along the east side of Wilson Avenue between Cutler Street and Perrysville Avenue, Council District Number 6. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Firm to recommendation. And our last bill of the day, Bill 846. Bill 846, 
Resolution repealing Resolution 296 of 2022, effective June 14, 2022, authorizing the URA of Pittsburgh to acquire all the city's right title and interest, if any, in into the publicly owned properties in the 20th Ward of the City of Pittsburgh, designated in the Deed Registry Office of Allegheny County, is Block 19G, Lots 2756, 131, and 206, Block 20M, Lot 77, 78, 79, and 112, and Block 20S, Lot 46, Council District Number 2. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Affirms the recommendation. That does exhaust our agenda. Our meeting announcements are that next week, Council will hold our regular and standing committee meetings on Tuesday, November 1st and Wednesday, November 2nd at 10 a.m. Speaker registration closes at 9 a.m. November 1st for the regular meeting and 9 a.m. November 2nd for the standing committee meeting. So register to speak at these meetings. Please fill out the sign-up form on the Council meeting webpage by the deadline. You may also call the clerk's office at 412-255-2138. Is there anything from members? If not, need a motion to approve the minutes and adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. We are adjourned. Thank you.